All right, folks, today it's a crew show. Me and Zach are talking about many things. We're talking about hydrogen. We're talking about wind power. No, not wind generators. Sailboat racing, right? We're talking about my first impressions of the Polaris slingshot. And we're answering a big question from last week's podcast. What are some cars that look light but are heavy? And what are some cars that you think might be heavy but are actually surprisingly light. It's a crew show. Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. Here we go. Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast with a uh, slightly chilled caffeinated beverage. Here you go. Thank you. Uh, all right. 28 minutes in. This will really get going. Right. The second half of the show is really going to pick up. Like VTEC. <laughs> like, exactly. VTEC <laughs> will kick in eventually. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right. I have eight things to talk about on today's program. Okay. I've looked up a bunch of cars because someone posed a question on, on the last show mm. asking, what are some cars that are surprisingly light and surprisingly heavy? Yeah. I have that as number eight. Oh, okay. Well, so you, I, you drove- um, I want to build up suspense to that. Stick around for the second half of the show. To the riveting math that will happen right around when the Celsius kicks in. It's called engagement. Item number one is I want to talk about the watch giveaway. Mm -hmm. It's on the Instagram. Go to the teal on the right. We've got I have the we have the details and the game is active From now until December 1 you have to enter I, I said I was gonna do this and I now we now have the formula and here we go It's on the Instagram go check it out if you like so the giveaway the prize right one of one prototype notice Canyon watch the dial is dark teal it is the only one. Whoa. It's the one that we made to see which final colors we would do. Serial number on the back is XXX out of 100. So it is a, it is a prototype. It's, it's final. It's, it's a, it works. It's like a work. It's a real watch, but it's the only one. I won't even have one. It's the only. It's That's the, cool. I could have kept this one if I wanted, but I didn't. We're doing a giveaway. So you can win this watch. We sold 100 of the mint green in an hour. A lot of people wanted but couldn't get. This is the opportunity to get one. There is no purchase necessary. There are three ways to enter this contest to win this watch. And the prize, by the way, isn't just the watch. If you live in North America, which Mexico and Canada are included, you will get the watch. I will fly you to Los Angeles to collect it from me in person. Uh, I will put you up in a hotel. I will pay for your airfare. I will take you to Kogi Taqueria to experience authentic Los Angeles food. We'll have a Korean burrito together. And I will take you in the canyons in any one of my cars that you choose. Woo. Okay? It's, it's the whole deal. If you are international, I'm not buying your flight. But I'll do everything else. If you want to come to L.A., I will do everything else besides buy your international plane ticket. Uh, otherwise, I will ship you the watch anywhere in the world. Okay, I cannot be responsible for what happens to it if you live in fucking Syria or something. <laughs> like, if you live in Russia and you win, best of luck. I'll send you the tracking number. Maybe it'll show up. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so that is the prize: watch and a trip to LA to collect it. If you live in North America, uh, to enter, there's three things you can do. One is you can sign up for Be the Match. Uh, you can go to bethematch.org and sign up uh, via their website to be a stem cell and bone marrow donor. Uh, the sign up process is very easy. They will send you a kit with a little cheek swabber thing. You swab your cheek, you send it back in, you get put on the registry. When you send the cheek swab back in and they send you a confirmation email saying you're now on the registry, you forward that to us and you're entered. Okay, that's, that's option one. You cannot do that method if you're over 41 years old. I'm sorry. That is for the youth, the youths, as it were, okay? We need the blood boys, two blood other, people. The, two other options. You can go donate blood or platelets, okay? Uh, and if you go do that, you go to your local hospital, the Red Cross, wherever you do that locally. Pick a spot, I don't give a shit. Uh, get documentation of your donation, a receipt, and some photo, you know, a photo of you with today's newspaper or something uh, indicating that you're, you're doing this, this uh, blood donation and that you're real, okay? You can do this multiple times between now and September. 
I don't know what the limit is, but if you donate blood multiple times, it's multiple entries. It might be like every 90 the, days or something. I don't know if they'll actually allow it, but if you can, do. Oh, and by the way, regarding Be The Match, if you signed up for Be The Match any time in 2023, send me that confirmation, you're good. That's an entry. I, I, the idea of the game is to get new people to register. Mm -hmm. And I had a couple of emails from people that were like, I registered in 2021. What do I do? And, and I appreciate that you registered. You're a good human. But the point is to drive new registrations. But if you did register in 2023, I will count it. Okay? Or donate blood or platelets. Each donation should be a separate email, separate documentation, but that counts as multiple, as as many entries as you can do. Option three, some people emailed me and said, for one reason or another, they're too old for Be The Match, and a physical condition prevents them from donating blood. They have a blood disease or whatever. In that case, if you make a donation of $100 or more to Be The Match, through their website and send me the receipt, that's an entry. The idea isn't to do that one. You, I really want you to do the other ones. I prefer you did the other ones. It's the idea, we have a national blood and platelet shortage. You can really save someone's life. If you're chosen by Be The Match to be a donor, they're nine times out of 10 not drilling into your bones for bone marrow. Mm -hmm. It's a blood draw for stem cells. It's very painless and easy. My wife did it twice. Um, but if you can't do option one, you can't do option two. Option three, $100 or more donation, uh, and then send in the receipt. And I will check with them to make sure that these are real. I know what a real confirmation email looks like. I know what a real receipt looks like. Um, and, and we're trying to do something good. Don't be a shithead and try and cheat this to win a fucking watch. Yeah, I mean, don't, don't Photoshop a form. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's just, you know, we're trying to do something good here. Play for real or, or don't play, you know? Um, multiple monetary donations do not count. Only mon multiple blood donations count, okay? And we have an email address set up. It's on the Instagram. It is peaceunique at thesmokingtire.com. P-I-E-C-E. U-N-I-Q-U-E, peace unique at thesmokingtire.com. Uh, Zach, will you please copy and paste all these into the show notes for this yep. episode later? Um, so I'll have multiple posts up. The Be The Match process does take a couple weeks. From signing up to getting the kit to sending it back to getting confirmation, that takes a couple of weeks. And the deadline is December 1st, 2023. So don't wait until the middle of November to do this. If you're going to do the Be The Match one, do it now. Get the process going. Um, and somebody will, oh, yeah, and a commenter on this says, can we choose the Delica if we win? Yes, you can. we can go in the canyons in the Delica, but Hannah gets to drive you uh, if, if you win. Um, so, that's yeah. A, that's a cheat. That's a way to extend the trip and yeah. the time with you by several hours. <laughs> by a long time, yeah. Uh, so anyway, that's the game. That's the prize. Um, please do the blood stuff if you are physically able. That's really what I want you to do. I only added option three for people that are physically unable um, to do the blood stuff. I've, I donated blood. I'm also on Be The Match. I'm not a, not a hypocrite, as is my entire family. So... Um, As that, am I. And, I, dude, I did the playlist a couple of times. Like, yeah. you get to watch movies and TV, and they bring you Gatorade. It's not like, a big deal. It's not a bad time. Yeah. It's actually quite relaxing. It's okay. Just make sure you eat first. Make sure you eat first. Make sure you definitely eat first and don't be hungover. Um, oh, besides God. those things, you're good, you're good mm -hmm. to go. Um, the watch is beautiful. The only reason we didn't make the teal is because I liked the other two colors better, but it's certainly a standout uh, watch. And... When you come to L.A. to collect it, if you win, it'll be at the event where everyone who bought the mint green one will be collecting their watches. So everyone will be collecting the watches that they paid for and had to jump through a hoop to fucking get. Uh, all pro drivers, by the way. Uh, and you're going to get the only one that is a different color. Um, and that'll be very, very cool. So that's the game. Uh, you can read the, the rules. They're up on my Instagram. Um, and... Uh, and yeah, it's a it's a it's going to be a very cool thing. This is a great thing. It's a good this idea. A very good it's thing a good game, doing. right? Yeah, good but game. it's a good thing you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a good idea. The be yeah. the match people are stoked. 
Um, and the game is in honor of uh, the memory of John Stein, who lost his battle with leukemia, but who uh, got probably two years due to a stem cell match uh, and transplant. So that's that. Um, that's item number one. Check. Item number two is go down second row left, the Brecky Car Club event at Westside Collector Car Storage South Bay. Uh, if you're in L.A. or you want a reason to come to L.A., Saturday, September 30th, the event is open to the public. Uh, come on down uh, at Westside Collector Car Storage South Bay. Uh, if you want to show your car, you have to go to the Brecky Car Club Instagram and register. Okay, we, although we have a big parking lot, it, there's only room for so many cars in the lot. There's lots of street parking right outside the property, but we've already got 150 cars uh, registered to show. There's going to be can vendors. I park, can I park my car inside the car garage? Car inside. Okay, good. Uh, celebrity guest, Zach's Daily Driver M3. <laughs> um, and uh, It's also accepting donations. Right. <laughs> Put the tip jar hanging on there. Yeah. Uh, so that's Saturday, September 30th at uh, 8 a.m. to 8 a.m. Oh, 8 a.m. till till noon. Uh, we're gonna have food trucks out there. There'll be a DJ. There's gonna be vendors showing their wares. There's gonna be a bunch of really cool cars. All of my cars, obviously not the Lambo, which is up at Donnie's, but all of my other cars will be there. Uh, I'll be hanging out. My staff will be showing off our new property, and uh, there'll be some some goodness. So if you're local, come on down. If you want to bring your cool car and show it, please apply uh, through the Brecky Car Club Instagram, and they're collaborating on the post uh, that's on my page, so you can just go and see that. Okay, that's item number two, the event. Very exciting. Grand opening event. Um, item number three. Very proud. Yesterday, I took down the box from the top shelf of my closet marked oh. 38 jeans, and I put on smaller pants, and they fit. Dude, you are Only losing took weight. six fucking months, but I got, I, I've, I've lost four inches on my waist. Uh, Sarah saw your Brecky Car Club Instagram video last night because I was watching it, yeah. and she was like, "Whoa, he's lost weight." Yeah, like, I don't know how much, but pants that start with a three—that's awesome. And yeah. only one X on the shirt, and it's loose on you. XL XL shirt, not two XL. That space. <clears throat> proud of that. That's item number. You two. should be proud of that. Uh, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Uh, you want to talk about the ISF? We can go to ISF. Sure. And then I'll come back. I just want to, well, I want to promote two of our videos. Yeah, we, we have, have videos the that supercharged went up ISF last week. that's up. Porsche 959 videos up. We talked about the 959 already. We did talk about the 959, but not I just a lot of views on the 959. Not okay. bad, but not huge. I mean, considering it's not why I was in Germany, yeah, but like, you know, know. it's 959. SEO, thought, older car. Would have thought a little more, but okay. I don't no know. one's really searching 959. I guess. Go watch 959 video, please. Uh, I do want to drive one someday. But what about the supercharged ISF? Uh, Sticker license plate, very good. Totally surprised me in how well it handled and felt compared to when it was stock. Like we had a we had a press car back in the day, like as did yeah. everybody, and it rode like garbage. Yeah. And I remember being so surprised at how quickly it would like light up tires and step out. Not because I was trying so hard, because it was way too stiff. And so I, when I was doing research about the car. Lexus, they had two versions, 08 to, to 2011. Um, they set the car up super low because mm. it looked good and it lived all over the center of gravity, but then they had to have really firm springs so you don't ride the bump stops the whole time, which is contributed to it riding like shit. 2011, they literally changed every suspension component and no review was that impressed with it, even with that. It was like, it just the ride was unrefined, too stiff, everything wrong with it for not just for being a Lexus, like it's a sports car, sure, but compared to C63 at the time or the M3 at the time, like E90 rides really nice, handles well. Um, but this dude did Olin's with custom Swiss springs on it, mm -hmm. and it was like the perfect Canyon suspension setup. Mm. It, we we're on Big to, uh yeah, Big That's, Tahunga. That photo's Big Tahunga. And it was yeah. like those little bumps that are there, it just soaked them up, didn't lose grip. It was so good. And of course, it had supercharged and running E85. Yeah, it's like monster. <laughs> so it's like 800 at the wheels or 700 at the wheels. Um, you go through gas. You go through like three tanks of gas. Did he bring extra E85? He 
did he? Uh, he did. Yeah, I think he did because yeah. he had a friend with him who also had an ISF and yeah. they had a can. Yeah, they've always um, got extra. You yeah. never know when you're going to run out. That's the problem with the 85. Totally. I mean, you we're way run, up there. You, you can, can run just out there. run out at any time. That's what I don't like about it. Yeah. I understand. I mean, the power you get is amazing. Yeah. But it can be very inconvenient. Yeah. But um, That's why I like yeah. my Octane Booster way better than E85. It's just way easier mm. to carry extra. True. You know. That's a, I wonder if someone could get the same power engine to engine. I mean, like that. that's I mean, a chemical E85 question. I mean, E85 is typically comparable to a race gas tune to a 100 octane tune Ooh. so that might change i think you probably could guys i gotta take a quick break from the action for nascar some other action and this episode of the smoking tire is brought to you by nascar the playoffs are heating up as drivers head to bristol for a saturday night showdown under the lights as the field will be trimmed from six to twelve playoff drivers in the elimination race presented by xfinity for those drivers close to the cut line they'll be giving everything they've got on this challenging short track to survive and advance to the next round of the NASCAR playoffs. This is always one of the most anticipated races of the year because it's a track that breeds close racing and heightened tempers. It's one race you don't want to miss. So tune in to the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs at Bristol, Saturday, September 16th, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific on USA. We're also brought to you today by Groove Life the Groove Life belt. Are you still using the same belt from 2003? Maybe you've lost a bunch of weight and need to get a smaller belt. Time to update your belt game with Groove Life. The Groove belt has proprietary webbing engineered with just the right amount of stretch, and Groove Life has designed the world's baddest buckle. It snaps together using rare earth neodymium magnets set in an aluminum alloy. Trust me, your waist will thank you. The buckle includes what they like to call stiff tech. That's a fancy way of saying there's no annoying belt flaps that need to be tucked into your pants. And whatever happens to your Groove Life gear, they are here to help. Groove Life has the 94-year no BS warranty. Your grandkids might be making warranty claims on this stuff. It's the last belt you'll ever need. They'll bury you with it. That part's not written. I added it editorially. Groove Life, anyone who's willing to make a product that is supposed to last 100 years, I get it. I've been working on my belt game. My I'm running out of holes, so I had to grab the Groove Life belt, try it out, and it is uh, pff, easy to use, holds my pants up real nice, and it's real comfortable. It's good for the office, the woods, the backyard, everything in between. It never needs to be adjusted. Just put it on and forget about it. It's grown from a side project to a company that now provides for over 100 families, recognized by Inc. Magazine as one of the fastest growing companies in the USA. Bring your belt into the 21st century. Head over to GrooveLife.com slash tire for 20% off all Groove Life products. That's the best offer you'll find, but you got to use my link at GrooveLife.com slash tire for 20% off your entire order. One last time, GrooveLife.com slash tire for 20% off your order. Now, back to the action. Ooh. It was boosting. I mean, it's depending where, if you live somewhere, you know, like Nebraska or something right. where E85 is common, yeah, it grows it's on the way tree. cheaper. Like, it's, like, mm -hmm. cheaper than gas. Yeah. And you get a lot more power. So, like, I get that versus but here, gas. I'm wondering what it yeah, is. here it's hard to get E85. Hmm. Where did this guy come from with his E85? Uh, Orange Too County. Low? Oh, so down yeah. there they've got a little more. They have more. Yeah. Yeah. But rad? Great. Like, fast, handled. It sounds like a Mustang, 5-liter V8, but, like, yeah. it sounds exactly like a loud Mustang. Um, uh, transmission, though, like... I mean, it's the only downside because some just there, old. there are aspects to cars that you can upgrade where they feel, let's say, modern. You're like, oh, this rides as good as a new car using mm. MagRide technology. But then you shift, and even if they, you know, change the programming and the transmission or whatever, like, it's just not like a DCT. Mm -hmm. It's pre it's decent, but you know, the M3 would always win the contest because it has a DCT or a manual. Right. But otherwise, man, like. We know so many people that have these that put miles on them. They don't break. Yeah, Freddie they're, bought they're that good. one with like yeah, he bought like a garbage one miles and it or was something still on good. it, and it was fine. Yeah, like if if all you want is a you know fast like E ninety or C sixty three, 
and you don't want to fix it all the time, this car is awesome. Yeah. It just needs it just needs suspension, and then it's magic. I mean, it feels super tight. So uh, go watch that video, listen to it, watch see all the parts that are on it. There's a ton done to this thing, and uh, it get it gets lively. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I went sailboat racing. You did. That's yeah. right. Yeah. It was fucking awesome. Uh, I I I went out with this dude Hunter, who. Um, came to look at WCCS possibly for one of his cars and then we talked about sailboats and, and he was like, you know, I do this. And I was like, I've wanted to do this. So he invited me Did you me ask him about team. the crack and the prostitutes? And stuff? Is <laughs> yeah. That? Okay. What? Hunter Biden. Oh, sorry. I missed yeah. that. I, uh, yeah. It's okay. That's Continue. funny. I, it's not, I don't spend my time thinking about Hunter Biden. How about that? Huh? You don't. I, I have know, a poster of him on my, on my wall. Weird. He's on my yeah. wish board or whatever it's called. <laughs> um, he and his father own a beautiful boat. I think it's like 42 feet maybe. Uh, there's a photo of it on on my uh, Instagram if you go down a little bit. Yeah, if you go through that, there's a little slideshow that shows the boat. Um, they've got a they've got a pretty uh, beautiful uh, beautiful boat. They've got a pretty serious uh, team. They were contending for the championship. There's is they this is every Wednesday all summer, 22 races in the season. Whoa. It's the longest regatta from what I hear in America. Dude, 85 boats started this race. Jeez. 85 fucking yachts. We get out there for the start. I'm like, holy shit. Do they start all in one line? Or are they... it's, so it's like uh, it's like endurance racing. There's classes. Okay. So there were seven classes. And and they start them from fast and then work their way to slow. So this we were in the one of the cru- cruising A, I think mm-hmm. it's called, or cruising one. And it's, it, it's like for boats that have full cabins, you know, and like there's boats out there that are racing boats. They're maybe 40 or 50 feet, but they really don't have like a below deck. They're for racing. And I saw, we saw boats and the guys were like, oh yeah, that guy built that boat for this racing series. Whoa. So people that like take this shit really seriously. Um, these guys take it pretty seriously considering the fact that the boat is a, a cruising boat. It's a fast cruising boat. We saw over nine knots, but it's it's it is it has bedrooms and a kitchen and shit like that. You got a lot of lean here, right? You guys are all sitting. It was on that windy, side. dude. Yeah. It was fucking blowing like fifteen to seventeen knots, which for a boat like this is windy. Above twenty, you have to start trimming in sail. You can't run full sail. Like seventeen is a that's a big wind. If you run you. full sail, does it tip over or would it tear the sail or? It it could get dangerous. It you could it won't like it won't totally capsized because the keel has mm-hmm. a lot of weight in it, but it's certainly not fast. Beyond mm-hmm. a certain angle of lean, it gets both very uncomfortable and very inefficient. That makes sense because there's less surface area displacing the water, right? Right, right. So we, this was like about as windy as it could be while running full sail. So, um, you know, I showed up and I have a lot of experience sailing, but I've never been on this boat. I've never met any of these people except the one guy. So like no ego. I was like, hey, I can do this, I can do this, but I don't know how certain specifics of this boat works. So I was like, if you want me to, like, be ballast, like, just sit on the high side and watch, like, no problem. I'm just happy to be here. You want me to turn a winch? Fine. You want me to do- And they were like, actually, we're one short, so can you help with this? So I actually did get a little bit of a job. Um, but, you know, team sport, sailing, fucking – Enough time, enough enough time between things where you have time to sort of chat and joke about and take pictures and and have fun and but also there's enough going on that you're never sitting still for too long. I got really wet. Really? <laughs> I got, yeah, I mean, because I was on four deck crew, which is up front with the spinnaker and sitting on the high side as ballast. So like it was big waves. So I was just getting just got just got hammered with water. Um, but like these guys are really, um, you know, they're they're all very pretty talented, and they've got like a procedure. And I'm 100 percent on this fucking team for next year. Cool. Like, every, I was like every time, every race I can make, I'm gonna make, uh, assuming I am, will be invited back, which it seems like I will. Um, and uh, really nice group of people. We finish. Uh, oh, I don't know if I have a photo. We finished second in this race, but by like 10 seconds. Which in an hour and twenty minute sailboat race, ten seconds is, you know, not much. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, you know what's cool about sailboat racing that is different from car racing, is the course is like, a you know a start line, 
right? And then a point, and then another point, and then a finish line. You can get to those points however you want, especially the upwind leg. The upwind leg, you know, you have to go back and forth because you can't sail into the wind. So there is literally an infinite number of strategies for like that. how frequently you want yeah, to attack, the, all that the stuff. The downwind legs, you pretty much just, you know, point at it and set your sails and make some adjustments. But the upwind leg is like, do you go one big move out and back? Do you do little moves in the middle? Do you, you know, what do you do? Mm-hmm. Uh, what does everyone else do? You know, and so uh, there's a lot of strategy. And um, the strategy at the start is crazy because basically, you know, there's a, there's a countdown and it starts at like 25 minutes. And then all the boats, you can go wherever, as long as you don't cross the start line until the gun. So like you can like move around. Yeah, you're not just sitting there. You oh, you wow. fucking I sail. Was like a drag around. race. No no no, you sail around and move. It's around. like a Le Mans start. And, you got to swim. And as the you boat. as you get closer to the gun, the boats get closer and closer and closer to the line, uh, and you're trying to and you and you know by the time the gun goes off, you're like eight ten boats that just lined dicey. up. It's intense, dude, with fucking huge ass yachts. Right. It's and intense. Ten seconds. By the way, in knots, you're moving 15 feet per second. Mm-hmm. So you were only 150 feet from the other boat, which oh, seems you're cl- yeah, quite close. You're, we're closer than that a bunch of times. There's a, there were times where we were like 15 feet from another boat. Yeah, Jeez. it's rad. So fun. I had the best time fucking ever. Uh, the boat is called Spirit of California. Go follow them on Instagram. I tagged them. It's Spirit of CA. That's the boat's... Uh, there's a better picture of the boat. Look how pretty that boat is. I mean, you want to talk about a beautiful ass fucking boat. That is a stunning sailboat. Right. 2004, that boat was built. Wow. And uh, nine knots on a boat like that is moving. That's that's a fast fucking boat for what it is. That's cool. We I flew, like it just simple. Dude, check out the spinnaker with Edvard oh, Munch's yeah. The Scream on it. That's awesome. Flying spinnaker downwind. And then if you go back to my page, we did on the downwind leg, we used the pole. Um, and and occasionally, I just had to be fat. They were like, we need weight. And I would go out. You're keep, like, I lost weight. No, yeah, no, no, still, need, still heaviest. So keep, keep going. So one more. Yep, two more. So right there, I'm literally just hanging on the pole to hold that sail out in the downward oh, leg. Oh, I thought you were just hanging out. No, no. That's me holding that, that sail out. Oh, you're doing out. a job. Okay. I'm actually being active there. Oh, wow. That's active ballast. That's all core work. And then see on the, 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 compu- the screens oh, yeah. on the mast, the telemetry of what we're doing? So right there, cool. we were doing 6.8 knots in an 8-knot wind, which is awesome. Very efficient. That's awesome. Yeah. What is so, max efficiency like, you know, carbon fiber, Oracle, you know, tax oh, write-off Oh, dude, boat. Sail GP boats. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the Sail GP boats? Those boats are doing 45 knots in a 20-knot wind. Whoa. Those are foil boats. Have you seen it? Just Google, oh, yeah. just Google they, a Sail they rise GP. out of the water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're flying. They're like, they're much more like planes than they are like sailboats. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. They can multiply the speed. That's cool. I have no interest in sailing one of those. <laughs> I want to watch that race, yeah. but like, I love... I mean, this is this is some real fucking white guy shit racing yachts, you know. But like, but like, there's there's so much to it. There's probably more, like, there's probably more to this than there than to racing cars, because there's so many things you can change about the boat mm-hmm. while not changing other things. Yeah, I mean, well, you're, you're it... constantly adjusting sails. You're constantly adjusting, you know, your your line. You're constantly in car terms, it would be like back in the day when you could adjust timing yeah. manually while driving. Right. You know, because you're not I mean, racing a car, you can't change the engine. I mean, okay, you can change level one, two, three, like in F1, but any other car, it's like the engine's on. Right. And you control with the throttle. But this is almost like, well, your spinnaker's an engine, yeah. your mainsail's an engine, you have, you your have, angle yeah. is like, yeah, all that stuff. And also because there isn't a, you know, on a racetrack, it's the racetrack's 40 feet wide. Mm-hmm. There's only so many places you can go, mm-hmm. only so many places anyone else can go. But on, on the sea, when you guys are all tacking back and forth to try and get to the upwind leg, you're, you adjust, you can adjust your position anywhere on the sea based on where your competitors are. And you can also use right of way rules to your advantage. So like there's right of way in racing so you don't crash into each other. And um, 
So it gets a little complicated, but if the wind is coming off the, st- if you're on what's called the starboard tack, which means the wind is coming over the right side of your boat and hitting mm-hmm. the sails, you have the right of way versus someone who's on the port tack, which is the wind coming the other way. So if you guys are fucking, if they've chosen a line and you oh, can wow. tack you can around, you can literally block it's them like by, by using right of way rules. And so wow. they, they're doing that shit all the time. Yeah. Huh. And you have to like round the marker a certain direction and like, you know, it's 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 cool stuff. There's a lot of like like this dude in the photo on the right, the uh, Bill, the guy standing up to the right, he's tactician. So he didn't like he's not I mean he he's he's he is doing physical things, but he's also he's telling the guy driving the boat what to do. He's telling the guys managing the sails what to do. Like he's the strategist. So. Got it. And uh, the guy at the bottom there, Hunter, uh, 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 leaning on the uh, on the cabin with, with the white hat on. That's it's his his boat. And then his dad is sitting at the back there. So is there the a captain, or is like, or the tactician? Is that what you said? The tactician is in charge of the team during the race. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes the tactician has a physical job, and sometimes they don't. Mm-hmm. Sometimes he tactician will also drive the boat, but I think the guy's name was Brendan who is physically steering there. He wanted to, it was like his first time in that job. He usually had the job I got at Fordeck, but they moved him to driver, and so I got his job. So I helped raise and lower the spinnaker, fly the pole, and make sure the jib would get back and forth cleanly during the tax. Fucking cool stuff. That's very cool. Yeah. I, th- I, I thought sailing was boring when I was a kid. I, I did it like twice. But... Now, if I have something to do, yeah. and then it's very interesting, I don't get seasick, all that stuff. It's boring yeah. if you're not on the boat. If you're on the boat, it's fun. Uh, I mean, I was <laughs> bored when I was a kid because I was just like, I wanted to go fast. But, oh, but, yeah. but now, I, I also really appreciate moving with wind instead of motors, ironically. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. And look, if, if the wind sucks, then sailing is boring. Yeah. Going fast. It tur- if it's boring enough, it turns into yeah. rowing. Going fast completely changes the game. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're, if you're going fast on a boat and harnessing the wind... To, to do so, then it becomes very fun. Yeah. And you can get really, you know, they're calling it 8 7, 8 8. When you, when you cross nine, it was a very exciting moment. Yeah, it's, it's not, cool. It's not easy to cross nine on a sailboat like that. And some of the really fast boats were going, you know, 12, 13, which is real. That's fast. Enough. What is that so, in miles per hour? I have to look. It's 1.2. Oh, okay. So it's like 16, 17 miles an hour. But like, you know, a 60 foot sailboat going that pace is pretty quick. Oops. There we go. Um, yeah. Um, I dig so. it. I went rock climbing last week, this week, for the first time in, like, six years. Yeah. And Your arms feel like they're going to fall off? Oh, they've been sore, like, <laughs> you know, like calves if you hike 10 miles? Yeah. That's how my forearms have felt for yeah. two days. But I bring it up because of the, the tactician and, you know, figuring out how you want to get across the water. It's rad because you also have all these holds and you have to, you can, you can do a different way than someone else yeah. depending on your ability, their ability. Like I really enjoy the problem. I remember the it. Alex Honnold thing and his like map up El Capitan. I think that you can only do one way and he, he did it the <laughs> same so. way every time. That's why yeah, he's alive. That, if you want to do it without ropes, I think you can only do it one way. Yeah. Don't get creative. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's um, rad. But go follow a uh, spirit of CA on Instagram. My other job was to get them an audience. <laughs> they need some followers for that boat. You'll get beautiful sailing pictures. That's what you'll get in your feed. And then there's the team. And I did not, I didn't, they invited me to stay and party with them after the race. I didn't feel like I had really earned that. Uh, plus, I uh, I rode a motorcycle there, which, oh. which is... Uh, no I'm drinky. Just, yeah, no drinky for sure. And also I had to ride home in wet jeans, which, which sucked. <laughs> yeah, it's summertime, but it's not that warm. No, it's cold. It was cold and wet. <laughs> oh, um, speaking of alternative uh, powers, remember the guy uh, that I posted on Instagram with five Toyota Mirais in his driveway? No, but someone brought that up in our questions today, yeah. our Patreon questions. So I'm wondering what So that's I had about. drinks with that guy. Okay. He found me. He invited me over. I went over to his crib, and we talked about hydrogen. Wait, does he live down the street? He lives in my neighborhood. Okay. Yeah, 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 he lives in my neighborhood. Okay. And uh, so it turns out he knows uh, some of my friends. He knows uh, Ben from Avance Magazine, Mm -hmm. Ben, Ben, Seattle Ben. And and so, yeah, this guy, uh, totally unsurprisingly, works in the hydrogen business. Uh, He runs a nonprofit 
uh, I believe it's called H2Go, I think. And uh, maybe I should have asked that. But it's he runs a nonprofit that is basically responsible for promoting the use of hydrogen in California. It was started by Schwarzenegger and his team back when Schwarzenegger was governor. And uh, they do commercial and uh, consumer hydrogen. Um, they're responsible for the build out of hydrogen stations. Um, but he, you know, and there's been some hurdles with that, which he he recalls your experience getting stranded at the Harris Ranch when they ran out. Um, and he had some thoughts on that. Um, but he also <laughs> is kind of like me in that he personally would rather implement much easier but less sexy solutions to some of our problems using hydrogen that could be done like today. Like his other focus is like on the port of Los Angeles where there are – Tens of thousands of trucks, not to mention forklifts, generators, and other heavy machinery that could easily be converted to hydrogen right fucking now and really imp drastically improve the air quality in Long Beach and San Pedro. Mm. Because right now there's like so much diesel down there, yeah. And you could convert like every forklift, and like when the port, when the ships come in to port, they can't run their engines, right? They right. have to once they're, I believe, within five miles of shore, they have to switch from their nasty bunker fuel to clean gas. So that was a law. Did you know that? Mm -mm. So they made a law in California that ships, any ships coming to the port, have to have a second tank of clean gas. Because bunker fuel, what they burn is like it's a nasty, nasty. It's like oil sludge, it's right? It's the dirtiest like, gas on the planet. Yeah. So they have to switch to the clean gas to get within shore. And he said the chart, the 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 air quality chart, the day they implemented that law, it was like it was like a hockey stick. Whoa. Instant, instant change in Southern California air quality. It's like it was total no brainer. But then, when they dock, they have to connect to shore power. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in the summer when the grid is stressed, that shore power is diesel fucking generators. <laughs> so those could be converted to hydrogen instantly. You could have a filling station at the port. Almost. Well, but instantly you have to change you have to change the engines and everything. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah, but yeah. but nothing new needs to be invented, and you don't right. need ten thousand people to buy cars, and you don't you know right. And you I don't think need any laws. Is the other side of that? You also don't need giant batteries and all the precious metals that come right. with it, which is the benefit. Right, of right. Yeah, and you don't you don't need you don't need to change the procedure of filling the generators with fuel or mm -hmm. whatever. You just you do the same thing. You're, you, the procedures would all be fundamentally the same. But he also talked about, and he said, but that's not as sexy as getting people to drive around in hydrogen cars. True. So it's not as politically prioritized. And I would also wonder if the – of the corporations and industries there have more lobbying power where they can go, well, totally. it's going to cost us so much money to change this. We don't want to do it. Yeah, We're bringing yeah. all this money. Whereas people like you and I, we just get we get attracted to cheaper fuel and we'll make that decision ourselves. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But he said because of a variety of things, they've this, they've not been able to open as many hydrogen stations. You don't as, say. Well, the the deal, the original deal was to build like 250 stations in California, which actually would be a bunch. But they've only been able to get 65 open. And which means that the people that they've convinced to buy hydrogen cars are having a harder time mm -hmm. than they should be having. Okay. And so that's one of the biggest hurdles for consumer hydrogen. Kids got to take another quick break for Brook Linen. They are sponsoring today's podcast. It's getting to be cozy season. You know what that means? Warm in bedtime, and it's a perfect time. It's like going to, when you go from the outside of the house back to the inside of the house when it gets cooler, right? So it's the perfect time to upgrade your bedding and your home essentials as the seasons change. It's fall, snuggling in bed with a kitten time, or maybe that's just me. Just like fall, Brooklyn and delivers crispness the colors and the comfort. Brook Linen was founded by husband and wife duo Rich and Vicky in 2014, and their mission is to provide their customers with hotel quality, award-winning luxury bedding. Their internet famous sheets have over 100,000 five-star reviews, endorsements from the experts at Good Housekeeping and Wirecutter, and are made with long staple cotton for longevity and softness. So if you're looking for a serious home upgrade, grab a bed and bath bundle for a good 
good night's rest and a new at-home spa routine. You can save time and up to 25% when bundling your new favorite home essentials. They sent me a set of sheets for my bed. It was easy to pick them out on their website. They fit great. They look great. My wife loves them. I love them. They're nice and cool. They just dissipate the heat nicely. Uh, the cats love them. And, uh, man, they're available in a whole bunch of colors to match my decor of my bedroom. They are great. And they have tags that say short side, long they side do. on the fitted sheet. That I is forgot awesome. about that. It's stupid man tags. It helps you know <laughs> what side you to put and what corner of the bed when you're making the bed. I didn't study rectangles in college. That right? It helps me. It's amazing the it things you smart. don't know you needed until they show up. Experience the difference for yourself and check out Brook Linen's new fall collection. Visit them in store or online at brooklinen.com. Use code TIRE for 20 bucks off your online order of $100 or more. That's B R O O K. L I N E N dot com promo code tire twenty bucks off Brooklyn in this fall and now back to the show. Um, but he said, you know, like we've talked about with battery electric vehicles, you could have commercial vehicles that run the same route every day, easily converted to either battery or hydrogen, True. and you never have to worry about you know them being stranded at the Harris Ranch. Yeah, I we think, don't need to change long haul. Right. You know, we, or consumers, we could change. We could do very. It could be mail trucks. It could be delivery trucks or UPS or Amazon or anything that runs the same predictable route over and over. Yeah, I think a lot of airports are are migrating towards yeah. electric vehicles for yeah. tow vehicles and things, yeah. which makes sense because of the torque yeah. and the emissions, and it's a planned route. Yeah. Um, the challenge there is you have to remember to plug the thing in at a certain sure. time. Or if the temps vary, like the range varies. But with yeah. hydrogen, you don't have that problem. Yeah. You, have the, you have the storage issue, of course. But. Yeah, but if you had a big distribution center, you could have a tank of it on site that mm -hmm. was filled once a week, and you could have a predictable filling schedule. Yeah. Um, you know, that, and that was cool. The other thing I learned, because he was asking me about charging my Ford and how much it costs to charge it overnight at, at home and whatever, <clears throat> and I mentioned, and maybe this is common knowledge that I just didn't know, uh, you know, I mentioned, you know, we usually charge it overnight, off peak hours. It's cheaper mm -hmm. versus charging it during the day. And he goes, ah, the coal charge. I go, what does that mean? He goes, California has basically no capacity to store energy. He said, so although we have a higher percentage of renewables than most mm -hmm. during the day due to solar, that energy does not sustain us through the night. Right. There's no way to capture it right now. Right. And so if you charge your car during off peak at night, you are charging it with coal. Holy crap. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's not a natural gas plant or something it's, like that? He said in, in, most of it is coal. Oh, wow. But he, it's, he, 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 this, look, this wasn't a scientific symposium. This was two guys drinking bourbon in a backyard. But, but this guy is an expert in alternative energy, and this is the way he put it. And I'd love for him to come on the show and talk about it, and maybe he will. I think it's—I think he's a very interesting guy. He's got 20 years' experience in hydrogen. He's got a lot to say. Um, but um, yeah, he basically was like, "You're not—you know—you're not—you're you're using emissions to charge your electric car by doing it at night." Wow. Yeah. Really, it's um, cold too. Because I know—I know that energy capture is a big topic, and they've. They're like, you know, the batteries have to be so gigantic. One company sure. I read about was looking at using the solar to heat like pellets in the daytime. So they're really hot. And then at night you could turn that into steam power, ah, which is like the barbecue method. But it's kind of <laughs> it's but like, it, what an interesting way to solve that problem. Roasting a pig power. <laughs> yeah, kind of. It was like make make coal that doesn't actually burn up. Yeah. But I, when I read that, I went, oh, man, we're really <laughs> we're reaching. <laughs> we're really having a hard time capturing this energy. Yeah. So, yeah. And he said you just said he said the the. You know, the energy use of our state, excluding transportation during the darkness hours, far surpasses what we can capture during the day with solar. He said it's just it's it's way beyond. He said that he, he according to him and granted, this guy works in hydrogen, mm -hmm. but he wasn't he wasn't lobbying me. We were just talking about pragmatic, practical uses of alternative energy. He was like. The math is so fucked on making everybody switch to electric cars. It's just completely fucked. There's no way. There's not even like probable ways to, to capture enough energy to make that solution work. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, the challenge, I think the thing is any avenue forward that's different than now has big challenges. Yeah. Like hydrogen has infrastructure. That also, you have to convert all the engines. Um, and then, I mean, the Mirai does use some precious metals, yeah, fewer yeah, sure. than, than a battery, of course. But what, what, oh, what the, is, yeah, go the ahead. The big thing with hydrogen, and I know they're working on this. I'm not trying to, like, say that that's not the right answer. Hybrid is or EV is. But one of the things I read about hydrogen was that at the time, making hydrogen energy is dirty because it's made from natural gas. So mm. you're still, like, refining gas to mm -hmm. get it. But... They are working on technology, and I think Chile is doing a lot of this, um, which I learned when I, we did that show after Johnny Lieberman was here, um, on converting uh, seawater to hydrogen. Yeah. And if they found some really efficient ways to do that. Desalination. Desalination, and then you split the water out of yeah. it, and you do smart things I don't understand. And if they can power those plants using renewable energy, then you have this wonderful, clean like, clean feedback it. loop. Yeah. yeah. And he, one of the biggest things that this guy was talking about was one of the biggest hurdles for us as a state, which is the level he works at, state of California or a country, is choosing one path mm -hmm. and thinking that there's a one path solution. He's like, there's multiple paths that should be simultaneously pursued. You know, hydrogen, yeah. hydrogen for forklifts and mm. and local trucks and this and that and trains you know and maybe ships and then battery electric for these other things and then hybrid for long range trucking and you know all, like he's like you could simultaneously pursue multiple paths um but we've sort of latched on to electric because to the consumer that really feels like the future Mm -hmm. You know, it's silent, it's techy, there's power, it's, it's, it's torquey and powerful and smooth and people are, it's, it's sort of the, where's my flying cars moment of like, well, when are we getting to the future? Well, I think it's also, we've talked about this after the Mirai situation is that with electricity, electricity is everywhere. Yeah. So, because convincing the consumer to change from one propulsion to another is one thing, but I think if he's talking about changing in the industry's mind, Okay, well, you don't have to approach people like us to do that, but you still have to convince a human being yeah. or a group of them that hydrogen is the way, not the EV lobbyists that show up. And maybe it's just the problem with human nature is like we see electricity as convenient because we interact with it every day yeah. and it makes logical sense. Well, like, if you to have it coming person. to your house, you don't right. think about it not coming to your house anymore. Or to your ship port or something yeah. like that. But um I mean, I guess it, the burden is, I mean, this is what this guy's job is. The burden is on them to explain the hydrogen system to the port of San Pedro or whoever and, you know, try to convince them to go that direction yeah. instead of diesel or electricity. Yeah. So anyway, it was very interesting. It turns out there is a totally explainable reason why this guy has five Toyota Mirais. Um, he, he lends them out to people to teach them about hydrogen. Hmm. That's that's why he has them. So that makes sense. And he said his he normally keeps them in his office, but his office is being renovated. And so <laughs> he has to keep them. I was like, I know we're a place where you can store cars, yeah. by the way. But it was like, yeah, my driveway is also free. Does he have, does he have a hydrogen tank like in his yeah. backyard? <laughs> there, yeah, right. Is he a filling um, station for the area? No, but he is a, he is a real connoisseur of bourbon. Hmm. Guy has a very impressive bourbon collection with some delightfully uh, rare stuff and uh it was it was nice to hang out i oh, i i, I think cool. when he comes back from his uh, travels that he should come on the show and uh, talk yeah that'd be hydrogen. great it was it was very 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 interesting um so oh we got a couple more things then we can get to the question of the day did you see the story about uh mr beast's experiment with the youtuber face no like four people sent me this and he basically said he 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 did a he did an experiment, and uh, that there it is right there IGN that story. YouTube infamous shocked face thumbnails could be on the way out. Mr. Beast did an A/B test with the same exact center card of a video. Only difference one straight face, one YouTuber face, and he had higher numbers and better engagement with a closed mouth straight face. That's interesting. So yeah. the audience has gotten tired of open mouth fake excitement face. Yeah. And they're yeah. like, no, I want something more genuine. That's yeah. interesting. So I, I, a bunch of people sent me that. 
Made me feel good. Don't yeah. shouldn't do the YouTuber face anymore. We could do the Throttle House tough guy face. Well, that's. I mean, Throttle House does it on YouTube, but that is also the Discovery Channel. Every show <laughs> that has men doing anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's arms crossed, looking tough. Shout out to Blue Collar TV. Uh, <laughs> American Chopper probably started it. Yeah. You know, shout out to those guys for innovating that. Yeah. Um, but I thought that was a uh, worth that is worth very noting. interesting. Yeah. Worth noting. That's yeah. So the YouTuber face uh, might be. I can't on its way fake out. smile for my life. I do the uh, now. I understand why Ken Block one wore sunglasses mm -hmm. and two just opened his mouth. Yeah. Because he looks excited like he's yelling, but he wasn't. And I, I'm like, that's great because you can't force your eyes to. I can't force my eyes to fake smile. Right. But I can just go like yeah. that. <laughs> you know. Um, right. So uh, topic number seven. First impressions of the Polaris slingshot. So haven't driven it in the canyons yet. Going to wait and see how that goes. But I've had 24 hours with this thing, and I have driven it all over. Yeah, we learned, the first thing we learned is that if you park it outside overnight in California, the condensation in the cabin in the morning will be a lot. It will look like you've just fucking ho fire hosed. I was going to say, it looked like your sprinklers kicked on. And they did not. My sprinklers did not go on last night. Wow. That is pure condensation all over the thing. So good thing it's a water-resistant uh, unit. Um, so there's a new engine. There's new steering, new brakes, new suspension. This one is a manual. Did they change the chassis Don't think so. Stuff? Okay. I don't think so. Um, I'll have to look a little further into it. They gave me the – I haven't done the full the full thing yet. Okay. But, but – Pretty much all major componentry is new. Um, and I got to say, the guy wasn't wrong. It drives a lot better. The steering ratio is much faster. The clutch engagement is really good. It's actually very fast. I mean, it's I don't know about what, what the numbers would say, but the, the thing revs past eight, and when you get it over five, it goes like a motherfucker. Well, and you're making what Integra Type R? Yeah, it's like 208 horsepower and 1600 pounds. Yeah, you're flying. All right. Yeah, it's 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 quick. It's definitely quick. Um, the brakes are. I don't actually believe that they are power assisted, but I don't really. Th if they are, it's not much at all. But it's so it's a firm pedal, but the brakes work really good. Um, I was able to slide it very predictably and easily uh, around some corners. It is really good for that. The quick steering, the steering ratio is, is much better. Um, the engine's definitely not as refined as like a Honda four-cylinder, especially at the low power bands. It feels more like something you'd get from, I don't know, Nissan maybe. Mm. Uh, but still, it's got the revs and it's got the power. And... Uh, it would be really easy to teach someone to drive stick on this. You can you can pull away from a stop without using the accelerator at all, um, and like dynamically, it's a lot better. It actually is responsive and fast and sporty. Uh, wow. So first impressions, you know, it's it's. My wife is very ashamed to have this thing parked in our driveway. It looks like a sneaker. It looks the color and the color's great. If you're if you're listening, like the color is this cool teal pearlescent blue, which looks rad. But it is that color with lots of orange accents. I yeah, mean, it yeah. looks like a like a sprinter's shoe. <laughs> it's pretty aggressive, yeah. and it's also like it doesn't really feel like you're driving a real car. It feels like you're driving like a toy. Mm -hmm. Like it's yeah. a lot of plastic, yeah. and and it does have like a real stereo with Bluetooth and even CarPlay, wired CarPlay. Um, it, 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 it has heated and cooled seats. Uh, the cooled seats particularly come in handy. If you leave this thing out in the sun, the black seat gets really hot. Wow. Um, but, <clears throat> like, it, 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 it does still feel like a toy. Mm -hmm. But. But it's a fun toy. At, at least, like, when I first drove this thing, I was like, you know, driving a three-wheeled vehicle is dangerous. It just is. But originally I said that the dynamics of the vehicle were not worth the trade-off in safety. I'm not saying you couldn't get better dynamics from something else, especially for $34,000. You probably could. But whatever they – the things that they have done have improved it substantially. And it at least in the, the way that I have driven it so far, 
It is responsive. It is quick. It, it does the things that you would expect a sports car to do. And the fact that it has quick steering and not much grip at the rear right. uh, means that if you wanted to slide something around a little bit at lower speeds, like I a, wouldn't fucking huck it into a slide at 80. It's like a GR86. It kind a little, bit. A, a, little, a little bit. Can you feel that there's only one tire in the back and oh, that's yeah. in the center? Oh, yeah. Because it doesn't lean as well, much yeah, that way, right? Actually, actually, you know what it's good for? If you pull all. into the, the driveways, like... You know, driveways in California because the roads are crowned. Yeah, it's sort of they're sort of steep and funky angles, and it's actually better than a regular car. You don't catch that curb on the outs on the inside rear tire, right? The way you do, uh, so you can actually pull into driveways like kind of hot. When you go around a corner fast, I know you haven't been to the canyons yet, but maybe does the rear wheel does the suspension compress at all like mid corner? Because you know, don't know. It, well, I mean, I'm just thinking about the physics like. You know, if it's going to lean left. Yeah. Well, there's no, you need two wheels for that, I think, right? So the it almost I seems th- like the center wheel would stay static and I then you lean the on the front. I think the center wheels would stay flat. I think, I think that that center can articulate a bit okay. from an angle, I think. Okay. I am not sure. But or it's tire flexion. That, that's just something that popped in my head that's interesting. Yeah. But it's cool. It. I mean, the thing is silly and it looks like a transformer, but if it's going to be... If the first one like purported to be a quick and exciting and novelty thing, but then drove like shit, yeah. Well, then you're not getting what you paid for, really. Yeah. And now you get all the extroverted. The first stuff one it legit has, but... drove like you put street tires on a UTV, mm. like it didn't drive well. It had like straight up like UTV steering, like it wasn't good. This is like someone who knows sports cars has gone through this and be like, no, no, there's a way that a sports car should drive, and so you we do these things. Gotcha. So yeah, no, like. You're gonna have it. For, you're, you'll have it for a couple of days before we f- make the film, uh, so you can enjoy it. You have a helmet. Yep. Yeah. You should definitely wear. Oh, I'm gonna. Yeah. This would be a riot on an autocross course. Probably. It'd be a fun way to test. Yeah, it. probably. Yeah. It would be a good time. Like, and it it it, like, it scoots. Like it's it's not bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, I I'm kind of impressed at what they've been able to do, based on where it was six or seven years ago. Uh, it's not like. I don't feel cool when I drive it. Some people do, mm-hmm. but I I don't really feel cool. But like dynamically, so far, nice job. Yeah, it's all right. So it's uh I uh I forget the guy's name who told me to drive it from Polaris. The racing engineer, Josh or John, someone with a J, James maybe. But uh, he was right. That's pretty good. Okay, question OTD. Yeah. We have the question OTD, which is from last show, which is, who said that question? Do we copy their name? Uh, I forget which. Bad Gardener. There you go. Thank you, Bad Gardener. Said, what are some cars that look light but are actually heavy? And what are some cars that look like they'd be heavy but are actually light? And his example was he was shocked to learn the Countach is about 300 pounds lighter than a Testarossa. Yeah. Uh, And the Testarossa is not a light car. Test roses are heavy. Yeah. They're like 3,600 like pounds. It was like 3,600, Yeah, they're pounds, pretty heavy. Which is wild. Yeah. Um, and f- so- Flat 12, that's a heavy engine. Right, because the comparison I found was a brand new Camaro SS, which is over a foot longer. Uh, the displacement is much greater than a Testarossa. Um, weighs 3,700 pounds. It's like the same. Yeah. But I did read that the Testarossa, the, the European cars were like 300 pounds lighter because mm-hmm. they didn't have door crash bars, mm-hmm. cats- uh, smog shit, a bunch of other things. Right. So those were a little bit more close to like a, but a sports also, car. But also, you know, Testarossa, like the Countach, not a good comparison for the Countach because that's the original one, the Countach is lighter, but the Testarossa also has six shock absorbers. It's got mm. four in the rear. Yeah, that's four heavy. Four coilover shock absorbers. So that probably adds, you know, 40 or 45 pounds by itself. Probably. Yeah. And, and the Countach got heavier through the years, too. Yours, the 5,000, is like the heaviest one. Well, it had four valves heads. It was like heads. 33, yeah. Yeah, and wider wheels. Uh, the anniversary is even heavier. Because yeah. it's got all that ugly shit on it. It's got all that ugly shit on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. It is so bad. Well, I have, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cars that are either lighter or heavier than you might expect them to be. I have... Seven as well. Okay. I don't you go, you go first. All right. Um, let's see. So my first list is cars that were surprisingly heavy. Okay. This one's a new car. Uh-huh. Bronco Raptor. 
Uh huh. Fifty seven hundred pounds. Oh, that's heavy. Which, considering it has very little sound deadening. Yeah. And people don't people like the wheels and tires, dude. Wheels and tires. But, wheels but and tires people, are so heavy. People bitch all the time about how heavy EVs are. Mm -hmm. That is the same as yeah. a Lucid or anything. Yeah, else. but if you're building something, you got it. It's got to really take abuse. That's, I know that's, that all that comes from weight. I, I agree, yeah. and that that truck thing is awesome. But I went, whoa, that's the same as like Lotus Electre, and everyone's like, look at these heavy EVs. Yeah, they're gonna kill all the pedestrians. Like Bronco Raptor, same weight. Yeah, yeah, okay. Cars that are surprisingly heavy. I'll go with a pair of Ferraris. Mm. Uh, the two nine six, which is a hybrid, uh, that's thirty seven hundred pounds. It's a lot heavier than you might expect a mid engine Ferrari to be. How about the 2005 Ferrari 612 Scalietti, 4,060 right? pounds. Whoa. Yeah, that's, that one's in the fours. Yeah. Now, granted, 12 cylinders, four seats. But still, but it's a 4,000 pound 2005 Ferrari. Well, on a related note, Ferrari FF, 4,150 pounds. Also all, V12. At all wheel drive. At all wheel drive. And what I thought was interesting is that 911 Turbo uh, weighs. Almost 400 pounds less. Yeah. Also has all-wheel drive transaxle. Half the cylinders. Half the cylinders. Mm. Ha save 350 pounds. Okay. Another car that's uh, heavier than you think. What else you got? Um, I don't know if this is heavier than one might think, but man, it's a lot. Uh, 2023 Challenger Hellcat. Oh, yeah. So that's 4,400 pounds. Is it really? The it, Challenger, the not even Challenger. the Charger. Wow. And the car it competes directly with, Camaro SS ZL1, mm -hmm. is 500 pounds lighter than that. <laughs> nice. 500 pounds. Same number of seats. Yeah. Like, basically competitors. 4,400 is a ton for a two-door car. That's, and that even car with feels like horsepower. it. But yeah, for a two-door car that's, that's not a Rolls-Royce. Yeah. Here's another one. A, the new AMG GT. Brand new. Oh. Which is basically now the SL with a hard top. Mm-hmm. 4343. For the AMG GT? What it was the last one way? It was, in the, it was in the threes. Wow. Yeah. That's it's a lot a of weight. Lot. They've added a back seat. They've added all-wheel drive. The, the last gen, taller. The, GT, the 2021 GTC yeah. weighed 3,800 pounds. So it's packed on 500 Fuck. pounds in a generation. That... That's not That's good. That's not what that car needed, because that was a great-sized car. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Not great. Okay, you got another heavy? Um, I have one more heavy. I don't have another heavy. Okay, my final heavy. Mm -hmm. Here's a good one for you. 1998. Mercedes. It's not Mercedes. Sorry, not Mercedes. Mitsubishi 3000 GT VR4 Spider. Oh, boy. Right? 4,123 pounds. Two-door car, 1998. Two-door, all-wheel drive. All-wheel drive, twin-turbo, retractable hard top. And probably hydraulic retractable hard Power. top back then? Power, Right, yeah. but not not electronic servos, oh, I maybe? I don't know. I think, Who fucking knows. I mean, if it's hydro, I think it's heavier than if it today. It's heavy That's as shit. 4123 in 1998. That's like... It's peak complexity, but before we got carbon and aluminum and everything. Yeah, and that's like the that's the perfect wrong form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, a real hold my beer card. <laughs> convertible. Yeah. All uh, right. How about uh, how about some surprisingly light? Well, first Countach, twenty eight hundred pounds. Wow. Yeah. LP four hundred. That's very that's light. Very light. It's very light. Twenty eight hundred. Right. <sighs> that's, Skinny mean, wheels, little motor, low roof. Yeah, and probably. yours yours is like thirty three hundred. Sure, which mine has mine is has more shit. Light, but yeah, it's like a mine's got C6 a Camaro. We saw that spacer they put in the fucking. That alone, motor. that's probably thirty it, pounds. That's definitely probably thirty yeah. pounds. Okay, how about the current generation Honda Civic, three thousand fifty pounds. Uh, not for not yeah. not the Type R for the regular Civic Sport or whatever. Oh, Do so you have that too? No, I have something very related. Twenty twenty two Honda Insight. Same size uh -huh. as the Civic. Yeah. Uh, it's a hybrid. Got yeah. a battery. 3,000 to 3,100 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's the same. Whatever Honda's doing, like their cars are big. Yeah. Well, and yet way better. The very Honda little. door slam. You can feel that True. there's not much going on in there. It feels precise but light. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well yeah. made, but right. not, not dense. It's like a canvas airplane. Right. Um, oh, speaking of which, yeah, someone, I, I asked some people on Twitter to help me solve this one, and someone. It's my retweeted it. If you want to go to the Twitter, someone came up with 
a formula to calculate vehicle density and found the densest what? vehicles, which was totally unsurprising. Uh, the 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 densest the list of densest vehicles, which oh, is incredibly uh, predictable. Uh, how about for light cars, the Nissan Kicks? Do you know what a Nissan Kicks is? Yeah, uh, it's what the uh, fucking what's the thing with the frog face? The XB? No. No, no. The the Jesus Christ. The Which thing they turned face? into the the thing with the, the frog, no the other the little one. Oh, the uh, the thing they juke. made a juke. The juke. The juke became the kicks. Oh, okay. So the Nissan Kicks is twenty seven hundred pounds. Damn. Yeah. What? Yeah. 2700 For this thing? Yeah, that's, how about that, right? That's incredible. For a little crossover, like a modern crossover, we yeah. should say. I want to show a picture because it deserves it. Wow, 2,700 pounds. Pretty light. Dear Lotus. Yeah. <laughs> you have competition. Uh, what, else, what else do you have for light? Anything? What else do you have for light? Um, eh, Integra Type S is impressive for a new car, but uh -huh. I think uh, LaFerrari weighed... V12 hybrid. Yeah. And it weighs 3,500 pounds. Oh, that's good. Which is impressive for them. Yeah, carbon tub, carbon body, and carbon seats. Now, what do you think? Where do you think the 918 fell? I bet it's f 300 pounds heavier, 38 and change. You are correct. Why do you think that? Just because. Uh, its battery is A about bigger... three times the size. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's. Uh, 6.8 kilowatt hours, and the LaFerrari battery is tiny, 2.3. Yeah, so yeah. that makes sense. I'll track that. How about this one? Is this one is? It's not that it's light. It's kind of light. The current Cayenne Turbo is 5,050 pounds, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. But it is in the last 20 years they've been building that car. Been building a Cayenne Turbo for 20 years now. The current car is 100 pounds lighter than the 2004 Cayenne See, Turbo. Other OEMs, that's doing it right. Yeah. Use the material science. That's great. There's a reason. It's because the original car had a bunch of off roady shit in it that they took out. Mm. Nobody's going off roading in a Cayenne Turbo. Right. And that's why people are using the original Cayenne Turbos for these overlanding builds. Because they're overbuilt? Yeah. They pe People were not going off roading in Cayenne Turbos. So they were like, no, people want to go fast in the street in these. So that's what it's got. But still. I'll count it for this game. That's pretty good. Now, the density chart is uh, Chihos on Twitter. Shout out to him. I queried a database of 53,000 vehicles by dimension and built a density value, the mass of a car divided by dimensions. Of the 30 most dense cars, there are nine Mercedes SLs, wow. 14 Bentleys, some G-Wagons, an H1, the Subaru SVX, and the Jag <laughs> XJS. The Subaru SVX is there? You pretty much, uh, the Continental GT has essentially the same rectangular volume as a Chevy HHR with 59% more kilograms to haul. Note this method will overstate the density on less boxy cars. So that's pretty, pretty interesting, isn't it? Kilograms per square meter. Right? Cool. Wow. So, the Conti GT zone. Yeah. That's great. I mean, it, it's not at all, you know, when, when we drive a Continental GT or a Mercedes SL or a G-Wagon, you can feel that. Mm -hmm. Of course. You can absolutely mm -hmm. feel the density, and it's the opposite of what you feel in a modern Honda. Right. I mean, it's just, it's different different strokes for different folks, right? But, like, you, it's a... It's, uh, Shout out to Chihos on Twitter. This is the density cost to be the boss. Oh, here we go. That's a good one. Scroll down. Since 2000, other uh, very dense cars consist of a Fair ton one. of VW, Audi, uh, Phaeton, Chiron. On the light side, excluding vans and trucks, the Mark 7 Golf reigns supreme. The 4C is very undense. Mm. Is undense, is that a word? Mm -hmm. What's the opposite of dense? Hollow, as are the mid-engine V8 Ferraris. A Huracan is 24% more dense than an F8. How interesting. Shout out to Chihos on Twitter for that math. I love I love when the internet brings you gold like that. Uh, thin is the opposite thin. of dense. Oh, okay. That, um, that sounds right. I had 
two more things. Okay, what do you These got? These are older cars. They're surprisingly light. Okay. 1963 Beetle hardtop. Oh, yeah. A f- 1,600 pounds. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it feels like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But holy nothing, shit. Nothing to it, yeah. But then this one uh, I thought was really surprising. What do you think a 1965 Ford F100 style side uh, style side weighs? 3,100. It's 3,225. Yeah. And an F250 back then was only 3,500. Yeah. That's like Corvette weight. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas today, the lightest F250 I could find, I looked quickly, uh, is 5,700 pounds, and yeah. that's not even Super Duty territory. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. That's a good game. Yeah, I like, I li- that, I like game. that game. Shout out to uh, Bad Gardener for that very high-quality game. Uh, let's see. We probably have some Patreon questions. We can do some of these. Oh, my yeah. God, really? We have that many? We have a there uh, is, excited audience. There is fucking no chance we're going to get through all these today, but we will do the best we can, and we can, we can kind of eliminate... Uh, well, we don't have to eliminate ones that are we've talked about. We'll see what we get. Of course, if you want to talk to us through the program, patreon.com slash the Smoking Tire Podcast. Oh, speaking of which, scheduling update, uh, the Are You Garbage crossover show will not be on Monday the 25th. It will be on Sunday the 24th at noon Pacific. Kevin Ryan hit me up this morning and had to reschedule. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you are in L.A. and... Uh, you're going to the Are You Garbage show on the 22nd, which is Friday. Yeah, yes. Friday. Uh, Zach and I will see you there. Mm-hmm. We, will, we, will, we will be going. Um, all right. Uh, some people asking uh, car, car, ha, cars and lightnesses. Um, uh, let's see. I don't know. Uh, okay. Wow, there's a lot of fucking... All right, a lot of weights. Did you ask this before in the in the weights? Or is that no, I said we we're talking about. We're talking I said here's what we're talking about, about today, okay, and cool. then ask question. All right, uh, Alejandro said, I've seen the Mercedes GLE bouncing mode video going around recently. Any other cars with unusual gimmicks like that? Uh, the only other cars that come to mind is the concept oh, Bose yeah. suspension that could jump over speed bumps. That was the early 90s, I think Who they did was that I with Lexus. Just, yeah, I was just talking to Mate. Ramak, Ramats at the Quail, they will have, I don't know if it's going to make it into a production car, but they have some prototypes of technologies that can jump over potholes. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They're, it scans the road ahead and can pick wheels up oh, off okay. the ground. Oh, that, Yeah. It doesn't jump, but it will. It can unload one wheel. For, that makes sense. To smooth out. So basically it can retract the shock. Yes. Ooh. Kind of. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't, there's not a lot of other cars that have had, I mean, other than Citroen. Citroen has had, had the original hydraulic suspension Mm -hmm. that could pick up a wheel to change a tire or do any kinds of cool shit like that. And there's stuff, there's like weird shit from like the thirties and forties. Like remember that video where it would like lower that wheel in the back, the fifth wheel to to help you parallel park. I just saw that. Yeah. Yeah. That's always going on. That video is really funny. Yeah. But those, that hydraulic suspension that's in the GLE and the Maybach is very cool, but like real expensive. It's not particularly practical for a lot of things. Um, Alan says AE86 versus E30. Oh wait, AE86 GTS. Meaning is that that's the old car? Yeah, yeah, old car versus E30 325. Which do you prefer? 325. I probably prefer the E30. Although the the 86s are very fun. Mm-hmm. I pref- I just prefer the look of the E30. I think. Chris N says, Zach, what would you buy for 150 grand new or used? 550 Marinello with a mm-hmm. manual. Mm hmm. Good choice. Uh, Tim says, Zach, how is your M3 as a camping vehicle? Bad as soon as the road gets anything other than paved. How would I, be, yeah, I mean, how would it be different than any other coupe as a camping vehicle? You just put stuff in it and then you do, take it out when you go camping. Yeah, I took it camping once and I couldn't go up a road that had rocks on it that were. Larger than, you know, three of these coasters. So I camped where I was. But, yeah. Off-grid? That, not that one. I would not choose the M3 for off-grid camping. Mm. Tim A says, or not Tim A, sorry. Bobby says, I'm doing a thing where I buy a watch, keep it for a few months, and then sell it and buy it for something $1,000 more than the previous watch sells for. That sounds like a fun game. My next watch when I sell my Omega Speedmaster Racing should be four to $5,000. What would you look at? Tudor Black Bay, 
or Tudor Pelagos, both of those would be very nice. Uh, Omega Planet Ocean would be very nice. A, uh, a Bell and Ross or a used Panerai radio mirror would be pretty cool. Uh, that's kind of where I would look. Or maybe a Breitling Super Ocean, preferably Super Ocean 42 with Arabic numerals. That could be cool. That's kind of where I'd be. Flannel Bob says, oh, that's more, more uh, power to weight stuff. Uh, Randy says the 2024 uh, yeah. Toyota Century SUV seems like a perfect vehicle for America. What are our chances of seeing it make its way here? If so, only as a Lexus. I mean, you know, yeah. America, Americans do not, we don't understand an expensive Toyota. True. But I could, I mean, it's got Cullen and vibes, oh, obviously. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't know what they would do with the front end to turn it into a Lexus, but I think it would make a good Lexus, right? I agree. I think it's a very, I mean, this is, this would be my favorite of the Lexus aesthetics of recent years. I right. I think the Lexus is, it's just not for me right now. Yeah. But they do seem to be leaning even harder into the angular design at Lexus and uh, Toyota. But this thing looks sweet. Profile's great. Yeah, it's cool. I'm definitely into it. Um, but uh, apparently it's front-wheel drive-based architecture, which is no bueno. But That's a hard um, – that, that would be a hard sell here, that too. That would be a tough, tough sell here. Uh, let's see. Uh Oh, surprise! Sound guy says wanted us to throw one in the surprisingly light, which is the DeLorean is twenty seven hundred pounds, despite rumors of being heavy. Uh, yeah, I mean that that actually tracks. I'm not. I think people assume they're heavy because they're slow. Yeah, um, and they lean a lot. And yeah, I mean they're they're not well engineered, but they're not like, heavy. Well, the I mean the doors were heavy. I remember opening the doors. Was the steering heavy? Like no power thing, steering. So the things you interact with. I think our the like controls heavy. are the controls heavy. The controls are heavy. But the car that we've I've talked about this in other videos. I forget where, specifically where, but like I don't like when people take out power steering or power brakes because they want to because the the car is light, but it ends up making the car feel really heavy. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to drive a light car that feels heavy. Mm -hmm. Right. And taking out power steering and taking out power brakes is a really good way to do that. And like, yeah, DeLorean has n no power assists and all the controls are heavy and clunky. And it's slow the, and it leans a lot. Yeah. It, it, it has all the attributes of a slow, heavy sedan. Yeah. Uh, Driving Cook says, I have a 2020 Mustang Performance Pack 2. And should I trade in my Mustang for a Civic Type R, uh, assuming I can get one close to sticker? I have a 2014 Focus ST as my daily and I live in Atlanta. I wouldn't want to focus ST as a daily and a Civic Type R as a weekend car. They're too similar. Too similar. Yep. It's just a slightly faster version of what you've got. Mm -hmm. I, I think having a front a front wheel drive sporty daily, and then some kind of more dedicated sports car for a weekend. If you're over the Mustang, you know maybe you want a really nice S two thousand. Maybe you oh. want to try and get into an NSX. Maybe you want to try a Corvette or a Viper. Yeah, some, I would take a step up or a and Porsche. Change, change the layout in some yeah. way. That would be exciting, too. Yeah. Uh, Matt Cheseldine says uh, that uh, I saw on the WCCS IG that we have a Type 35 Bugatti at South Bay. Is there a limit on the value of a car you'll store? Uh, there is not a limit of the value a car will store. And that Bugatti Type 35 is a Persang. It's not an original, which is fine. It means it's like half a million dollars instead of $10 million. Um, if the cars we store are over a million, there is an insurance surcharge. I don't make a profit on that. But when if your car is so expensive that my insurance goes up, I pass that on to you. And so there are a few people here that are paying what I call the pay the cost to be the boss tax. And uh, if your car is worth over a million bucks, I don't want to hear your fucking bitching about the insurance. Um, Sean Stewart says, where in the U.S. have you encountered the worst group of drivers? There's some pretty bad ones here. Yeah, and honestly. worst is not a it, it, not worst specific. is not specific enough. Like New York has the most aggressive drivers. Yeah, but I trust them. Right, L.A. has the most uh, aloof drivers. They're not paying attention. They're on. And their I phone. would say they're very selfish. I see. Yeah, they people drive as if 
them running red lights, that's what matters. Yeah. They got to get somewhere. There's a yeah, lot of that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Self-importance is really, mm-hmm. is higher here than it is in New York. It's the narcissistic nationals. Actually, yeah, in New York, it's like, it's frustration with the infrastructure and the traffic and just a bunch of fucking tightly wound people. Well, I've never ridden with cab drivers. New York is amazing because the cab drivers will be very calm. Yeah. And they don't yell or anything, but they make moves. Yeah. Like anyone else would be swearing and for sure. you know, putting like the flashing lights on the roof. Like those, they just go for gaps. Yeah. Um, but like, but like I've seen some like, like in Florida, you know, horrible. Florida, Florida is the most like, yeah, like LA you have aloof and you have, self like mm-hmm. self important florida you have like just don't give a fuck about anybody else at all like it's not even self importance it's just like it's just like living in a place where i don't you just don't care about anything <laughs> like <laughs> um i've never seen i've never been somewhere outside of especially miami where i think people are most likely to double park for extended periods of time not giving a shit what kind of traffic that's causing. Mm. And it's always fucking bad. Um, yeah, yeah. You know where there's good drivers, I think? Like the Pacific Northwest. Seattle mm-hmm. and Portland, I think. Because they get a lot of weather to deal with. They take pretty good care of their cars. You know, they're good at driving in bad weather. Same True. as Colorado, yep. pretty good. Places where you have to deal with bad weather pretty regularly, people seem to be a little more attentive. Yeah, and they're more relaxed, I think. Yeah. Outdoorsy folks. Yeah. Um, Anonymity says, as another manual transmission option has ended, Volkswagen Golf, actually two, the Mini, the the new Mini will not have a manual. How will you change your description of auto transmissions in the future? Will you ever stop mentioning a no manual option in your reviews. Ooh. I, think I mean, we, I think I, you get one generation of that. Right. I think we keep mentioning it if competitors also offer manuals. Right. And then once that fades away and the audience doesn't doesn't even know what a manual is or doesn't expect there to be an option, then it just goes away. Mm-hmm. Uh, 404 user not found. I rebadged my fusion to be fission a while ago. A while ago. What is the most creative rebadge of a car you've ever seen? Oh, I saw one that was like Oh shit, what was it? It was a it was Ram. It was like War dumb. where they flip it. Yeah, it, it might have been War. I've seen that with War Wagon. Yeah, War wa- War Wagon. It's pretty good. I gotta yeah, say. Yeah. Like I don't yeah. want to hang out with that person. Maybe. No. But for sure. Or, or if they're a huge Mad Max fan, then I do. But right. I do think that's creative and it uses the original letters. Right. I remember in '09 I saw a Bentley Continental GT that had changed the badge out for a Hyundai badge. That's pretty funny. Because tr- it fit perfectly, mm-hmm. and they're just trolling the world. Uh, I saw someone that rebadged their Civic Si as the Civic Hybrid. They put the hybrid wheels That's on funny. it. They, they made the whole car look like a hybrid, but it was an SI. It was a whole car cosmetics. I thought that was pretty cool. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, let's see. Nothing else I, that pr- yeah. really comes to mind. I mean, Dead Mouse and his Ferrari, that was pretty fun. That's pretty good. Uh, fishing, fishing. Yeah. And we'll take Joe photos Curran, next time. Uh, two questions. Would you consider owning a sailboat? Fuck yeah. And if so, what would it be? Uh, are there any yacht timers or sailing watches that you've owned or want to own? I love a regatta timer, which has the, the countdown. It, it, it's, it's a chronograph, but it counts down from 15 or 10 minutes to zero to help you time the start of the watch. Gotcha. I love the uh, Hoyer uh, Carrera Skipper, but it's too small for me. Um, I would buy a sailboat. I don't really know exactly what I would like. Swan makes some amazing boats that are beautiful and comfortable and well-made and fast. Um, and if I was fucking just balling out of control somehow, I'd want a Wally. They're fucking crazy. Um, let's see. Sonny says, oh, sorry. I'm what you, did you find? I'm going to okay. already. Sonny says, uh, I want to buy a 987 Cayman Boxster. Does 30,000 versus 60,000 miles really matter at this age? I feel like I have to replace some stuff either way due to age. Um, Does it really matter? I think I mean, it depends yeah. on how long you're going to keep it and drive it. Like, cause, because if, if I think if you drive a car 
if you buy it with 30,000 miles and you drive it to 450, it's probably not going to lose a ton of money. But if you, you know, put 20,000 miles on the 60 car, like w once you start getting near 100, yeah. I think then you start losing more and more value more quickly. Yeah, I would I'd say it, the condition, current condition and service history of the car matter more than the mileage number at this age. I think for, I think the condition you'll get the car in, yes. I think the resale eventually, which I know is hard to plan for, buying the car with the lower miles is probably yeah. smarter. Even though they're both in that meat of who cares if you're going to keep it for three years, driving it eight thousand miles a year. Yeah, like you'll be knocking on the door of ninety thousand miles with the other one. Yeah, yeah. Speedy P, did we see that Colin McRae's personal twenty two B sold at auction for nearly five hundred thousand pounds? Um, that to me seems. Low. That seems like a steal. That seems low. Because aren't these selling for three hundred? Like a, a, anyway? a regular good one is like three hundred. Yeah. I think. I think whoever bought this got a great price. I'm. I'm really surprised. Uh, I mean, that's uh, a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. But if that's a documented Colin McRae car, that's the road going version of the car he raced. Eight thousand, and it's got only got eight thousand miles on it. That's a fucking steal. Ton of money. And but, it was a prototype. Oh, and it's a pre-production chassis zero, dude. Stole it. Stole it. I mean, w what are the chances that that doesn't become a million-dollar car? I mean, honestly, that's yeah. that's that's crazy. I that's think it's incredible. a great deal. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I would if I had the money and I was there, I would have paid more. Because I, I'll, I'm pretty sure those are selling for like three twenty-five if it's a normal one. Uh, uh, Jack Volger says, uh, in honor of the GTI losing the manual, what has been your favorite manual Volkswagen over the years? Uh, 2004 R32. Favorite manual Volkswagen. Favorite manual Volkswagen? Uh, like Mar I, I think like Mark IV GTI. Yeah. Mark IV, right? That's like 04, 05? Yeah. Yeah, I like the R32 of that year. Because the R32, I mean, I don't know. I can't remember the, how the shifting feel changed between them. I just remember them being pretty solid yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Somewhere between BMW and Honda. Yeah. Uh, for reference, a few months ago, a 22B sold. It had 115,000 miles on the clock, and that sold for 250 grand. Holy fuck, really? Yeah. The 115,000 miles on the clock? Yeah. Wow, well sold. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah, so do, so a, a 2X premium for McRae, not ignoring that it's a prototype, ignoring that it's only got 8,000 miles on it. That's insane. That's a great deal. Yeah. Ton of money, but a great deal. Um, I, okay, wait. Let me see if I can understand this. RD Speed Garage says, what's your flavor? What would you take in this scenario? Four identical supercars, but the powertrain on each one is different. NA, turbo, EV, or hybrid? NA. Oh, Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, pick your powertrain. Yeah. Yeah, NA. Yep. It's not hard. Mm -hmm. That's an easy one. Especially if the horsepower is all close. Yeah, if it's the same the same power, same car, NA. Yeah. Absolutely. Manual transmission, NA. Just look at what I own. Every one of my cars is <laughs> mid-engine, stick shift. No, not, not all mid-engine. We have a front-engine V12. Then we have mid-engine V12, mid-engine V8, mid-engine V6. Mid-engine mid -engine flat six. It's power front-engine. All engine, manual. Front-engine. Yeah, but that's Hannah's. Oh, okay. Yeah, Hannah's, and the van is fucking mid-engine if we want to play that. Uh, yeah, mid-engine, mid fucking stick shift, naturally aspirated. It's all I need. No problem. Uh, that's the game, folks. Thank you very much for playing. Uh, what do we have on the calendar? Zach and I are going to go drive the Polaris Slingshot next week. And then we also have... But Bentley Continental. We got a no. We got a spur, flying spur. Flying spur right. speed. Kind of the opposite end of the spectrum there. I'm gonna go to Colorado to yep. drive the E-Ray for road and track, uh, which I don't know when the embargo is on that. And then I drove. I go to Italy to drive Porsche 911 ST. Oh, that's the next week. Yep. Right. And you. That's go, when I'm going to Performance Car of the Year at Thunder Hill. And, no, you go to Nismo. Oh, yeah. P. Cody's after that. Yeah, that's when I said I would drive a Nissan Z instead of going to Italy. To drive I was surprised that you preferred the Nissan to the 911, but you do. Yeah. You did. I, pref I do prefer a 90-minute flight. <laughs> See? You do. I'm, I'm traveling like 30 hours. Because it's a small place in Italy, so it's I know. three flights. It's, it's three? Yeah. Where do you have to go through? Uh, I think Frankfurt and then 
maybe Rome and then to another place. Is it a charter? I don't is know. it Frankfurt to? I have no idea. Oh, okay, but I, I just but saw, I saw a... three, so I don't, and I saw, and I know the destination. The destination city in Italy is not one I recognize as being a major city. And yeah, I went, yeah, yeah this is going to take some time. Whatever. But it's 9/11 ST. It's 9/11 ST in be, Italy. It's going to be awesome. I can't. Yeah, I'm surprised you turned it down, but. Fuck. I, did. I, <laughs> I didn't turn didn't. it down. I know you didn't. I, didn't. I was committed you elsewhere. Bu- I know you booked yourself. I keep, I keep my commitments is yep. what I do. If Nissan hadn't already bought the flight, yeah. maybe then I would have backed, backed out. I would have backed out. Yeah. Mm. Well, we have a lot, of, a lot of launches coming up. And then yeah, the, Brecky, the, the Brecky Car Show. Yeah. So September 30th, uh, Brecky Car Club, uh, X WCCS, X TST at uh, the new location in uh, the South Bay. And then, of course, go to my Instagram and, uh, and do the things to enter for the, uh, the watch uh, giveaway, one of one watch. That's going to be awesome. And, uh, yeah, thank you to our patrons for supporting us. And um, that's our show. See you later.